All right, everybody. Uh, welcome again to uh, COVID Questions. My name is Ryan Bohm. We've got Tanner Dance, my partner at uh, Core Capital Wealth Management. And our guest today is Frank Miley. He's the, the assistant head coach at Utah State University. My alma mater, Aggies. Frank and I were teammates way back in the day. Um, so a lot of love for you, Frank. Appreciate you taking some time, man. Uh, let's kick this off. Obviously, no spring ball. Walk me through that. Like, what did that mean to you as coaches? What did that mean to the players? I mean, how's everybody handling that? <laughs> I, I mean, for us, man, the biggest thing we've been stressing is, you know, what can we control? So that, that was kind of out of our control. And I, and I think, uh, you know, it kind of sucked because, you know, th those reps we need, especially for guys that we're trying to prepare for next year. Uh, some of our young guys, uh, we had a few uh, mid-year guys uh, that, that joined us. Those guys need reps at what we're going to ask them to do. So repetition is a big part of, of what we're doing. Um, and to lose those reps was, was kind of a big deal. And so uh, the longer this takes, the, the I don't want to say the worse it gets, just the harder it gets sure. for us to prepare them uh, because it's all about getting those reps. Yeah. So tell me, like, what – I mean, what are the what are the restrictions? What what does the NCAA let you guys do? Is it is it university specific? Is it from the NCAA? I mean, can the kids get together? Like, how, how are they? I mean, what are they doing right now? Well, right now, I think uh, you know, I just saw an email where they're where they're pushing the NCAA is pushing the, to allow the universities to do it individually, uh, according to their situation, which I think is good because I think some places are better than others. Uh, the only problem with that is everyone's going to talk about. You know, if it's if it's fair or unfair, uh, yeah. depending on where you're at, right? Or California, for example, is is kind of on lockdown. So, uh, it, is are other teams getting advantages by by letting their guys come back and get into things? So, but there we're still waiting to hear on that. It's kind of tricky, right? Because no one really wants to be the first school to do it. Uh, yeah. Usually, everyone wants to be the first to do something, but now it's kind of okay. I'm gonna wait until someone else pulls the trigger first before I before I follow suit and um, there, there, there's a lot of safety involved with all that stuff and we got to be smart and have a good plan about it. Yeah. So can the kids even lift? Can they work out? Are they getting together on their own doing things? You just can't be sponsored by you guys. Like what are they doing? Yeah. So, so as of today, our facilities are closed. So, so no one really can work out on campus. So our football facility here uh, is closed. Uh, no one can, none of the athletes can use it. And so really the, the obstacle that we've been facing is really how, how, do we, how do we get our guys to continue to make progress physically uh, and train uh, where they're at, right? And so half the team is not from Utah, so they're out of state. And then some of those guys don't have any weights or access to a weight room, uh, depending on where they're at. And so that just makes it extremely harder for us to, to make gains and, and get them physically prepped uh, for the season. Oh. So, so do you, do you send off, I mean, obviously you guys are sending off workout plans to those guys and you're going to have to probably adapt it to every situation because it's different, right? No doubt. And so we've, we've tried to, our strength staff done a great job kind of tailoring it and having uh, different tiers of workouts, right? Do you have access to, to a weight room? If not, do you have access to any type of weights at your house? If not, is it body weights? So all the way to body weight, workouts is what they got and and really that's all we can control and yeah. uh, at least if they're doing something it's better than than sitting around so yeah man I can't even imagine I mean obviously the the million dollar question is what do you think is going to happen in the fall I mean, any indication whether there's going to be football or obviously you guys are optimistic you want it to happen but no, no doubt and and shoot for for me I Sure, I'm probably the, the wrong guy to ask because in my mind, I'm just taking it month, month to month, right? And so uh, we told our guys, especially on defense, man, May's the most important month, right? And we're going to work hard and strain during this month until June 1st uh, to wait for further instructions. And then when we get to June 1st, we'll move from there. And then for whatever reason, they say, hey, July 1st, then guess what? June becomes the most important month moving forward. And so I think you just keep it in sections. Uh, of trying to keep these guys focused on just a couple of weeks instead of a long period of time. Uh, I think our kids are, will do a better job focusing on, on in the moment instead of down the road. So it, it's, it's tough, man. Yeah. I can't even imagine. Talk to me a little bit about academics. I mean, 
back in our day, you know, we had study hall, we had all these things where they, you know, class checks, coaches were coming in, making sure we were in class. If you missed class, you had to go to study hall. You had to get mandatory study hall hours. Like, how are you controlling that now with everything or how did you, you know, with everything online? I mean, did, did it make it easier, harder? It, it's, it's definitely harder, man. And to tell you the truth, man, we just finished the uh, last week and got all the grades back and our guys did a great job. So this was probably one of the best semesters we've ever had. I think they finished at like a three, a 3.1 overall, wow. you know, and, and a lot of that is just, you know, hopefully we, we're, at, we're at the point where we trust our kids, our kids trust us. And then there's some commitment to, to not letting people down, right? Your coaches and your teammates, as far as being that guy that, that didn't, didn't do his part academically uh, and didn't finish strong. And so uh, our, we got really good kids, man, and they did a great job this semester, especially with everything going down and having to do stuff at home and, and on their own. And sometimes, you know, kids need a, a kick in the behind to go <laughs> academically, right? And then because yeah. they're not here, they got to be self-starters right, to be able to handle their business. And I thought they did a great job this semester. Oh, man, that's, that's good to hear. Because I remember, again, back in our day, I mean, Coach Mack, like, that guy, man, he had some of, those, some of your boys that he had, to, he had to stay on those guys, man. <laughs> it was like a daycare. Yeah. <laughs> it's some grown, uh, some grown men. Talk, yeah, talk to me about uh, maybe some opportunities. Obviously, you know, as a, as a coaching staff, you guys have had to, kind of reevaluate you've had to look at everything you do and see how you can do it differently are there any maybe silver linings any opportunities things that you say you know this was super hard we're in the middle of it but we've learned this and we're probably going to continue to do xyz into the future um do you know what i think i think it's uh it's first off provide us some time to kind of you know we've kind of scouted uh, probably the first half of the season as far as, you know, some of those have new coaches, new coordinators, but we've been able to, to at least scout and figure out who their identity is, their personnel coming back. Uh, so it's allowed us to get ahead as far as that stuff goes. Um, but I think it's forced you to be a little bit more detailed in what you're asking the kids to do, right? Because there's only so much we can give them. So if we flood them with all this information because we, we, we can't put our hands on them here, I, I think you lose them, right? So you got to tailor it so that it's very specific, uh, it's short and sweet, uh, but the kids get a lot out of it. It's, it's gotta be a detailed plan and what your, as far as the meetings go with these guys. Uh, plus it's given us some time to, to put a lot of our teach stuff together, our progressions uh, and prepare better uh, for the future as far as teaching our guys. Hmm. So are you doing like Zoom meetings like this with, with, with the team or? Every week, every week. And so we'll, we'll uh, we have our position group Zoom meetings uh, and then we'll have our unit meetings, right? Defense will meet on Wednesdays. I think the offense does the same thing on Wednesdays. And uh, should we, we've had some guest speakers every week just to switch it up, right? So it doesn't become so yeah. trying to get these guys from being bored, right? From hearing us over and over. So, for example, right. the defense last week, we uh, or on Wednesday, we had Kyler Fackrell uh, jump on there and kind of talk about his experience with COVID, right? As far as training. So, so they understand even at the highest level, these guys got to find a way to battle through, right? And not have any excuses for it. And I think the cool thing that you're finding is no one has an advantage right now, right? We're all going through the same thing. So there can't be any excuses. We can't use this as a crutch going into the season, but hopefully find a, a, a mentality and, and an advantage that, you know, we preach that we're blue collar and toughness. We could, this is a great opportunity to prove that. Yeah. Right? The toughest teams will come out on top this season. For sure. For sure. Um, do you, is there any concern about maybe an increase in injuries? Um, you talk to the medical folks at all. I mean, again, with, without being able to get together and put in the reps, I mean, I have to imagine that maybe they might be more, more, more vulnerable this year. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because, you know, even though we're getting this information out to our kids, man, it's really the balls in their court as far as doing their part, right? Uh, usually part of, part of the, the progression and the teaching, we're involved in it because they're here, but because they're not, uh, I feel like we built a good enough relationship that they trust us and what we're asking them to do. But the biggest thing we've been stressing is change of direction stuff, right? Plyometrics, right? The burst from running. So, so running around the block, is not enough, right? And so yeah. they, they've got to do some explosive movements uh, so that when we get back, uh, shoot, we've stressed uh, shoot, the lockout, I think, in 2011, the NFL lockout. There was a study with those guys with Achilles, 
uh, injuries because yeah. it was really the, the same time frame that they had the lockout with the increase of Achilles injuries going into that deal. So that's something we actually pulled up for our defense. So they understand when you guys come back, we're, we're not going to have a lot of time to get you guys where you need to be. So you guys got to come back 80% ready, right? Yeah. And give us the 20% left, right? So, so if we only have enough time, say it's four to six weeks, and, it, and we, it's only going to allow us to get you 20% ready for the season, you got to come back at 80 and if you come back at 60, we got no shot, yeah. right? So that's the challenge for those guys is to come back as ready as they, they can and allow us to do the rest once they get here. Hmm. Well, I think, I think you know, if nothing else, you guys are going to see who your leaders are. I think uh, obviously there's going to be some kids that are going to show up and they're going to be ready to play. And there's going to be some kids that, you know, took a three-month, you know, time off and they're going to come yeah. sloppy and slow. Yeah. And uh, hopefully it's a good – hopefully – Obviously, you have more of the, 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 the prior group than the latter group. Uh, but I think the cream will rise to the top, certainly, because, yeah, man, they, you guys aren't babysitting them as much as. <laughs> yeah, you're going to get exposed, right? Yeah. You're going to get exposed. Yeah. We, we, we preach Mountain West champions, right? But everyone's body of work, when they come back, better, better match. It better match what we're saying, right? If not, then. You know, a little bit different, but maybe have you talked to Jordan Love recently? Obviously, exciting thing, first round pick, going to Green Bay, Aaron Rodgers, the whole nine. I mean, that's that's amazing. <laughs> it's awesome. You, you know what? I just just because I know he he'd be getting harassed from 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 everybody on, on both sides, the good and the bad about about where he's going. I shot him a text right before the draft, man, and he shot me back uh, saying thanks for everything. But I just wish them. The best. I told him we were proud of him, man. And if he ever needs anything, we're here for him. So, uh, yeah. other than that, man, I did shoot. I, I didn't want to. I didn't want my text messages to be <laughs> read right there, where he has 500 yeah. missed text messages that he hasn't sent back, and I didn't want him to feel pressured that he had to text me back. So, yeah, he's gonna handle his business, man. He'll represent us in, in the correct way, and so I'm excited to watch him play. Yeah, that's that's amazing for the university, and well, hopefully he does well, and and hopefully. You know, he has a chance to spend a couple of years behind one of the greatest quarterbacks in the NFL and you know, learn how to be a professional. So that's, that's fantastic. Well, we don't want to hold you a whole lot longer, man. Maybe one more question. Yep. What's the most important lesson that you've learned through this pandemic? Man, I, 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 think, I think if you try to control things out of, out of your control, you'll lose your mind. Right. And so it's about having a routine and just being consistent with it. I think that's the key to finding progress is even though we're in a comfortable situation as far as being at home. OK. And so I had my meeting with my, my D line this morning and I told them, listen, it's kind of a two edged sword. You guys are at home. Right. So you feel a little comfortable. Right. That's that's why I don't ever recommend working out at home, because, you know, if you're too comfortable, you could easily change your mind about working out. But for us to get where we want to go. Each person, it's it's their job and their duty to strain their body and their mind while they're at home. And all we're asking is one hour a day, right? Yeah. So you got plenty of time to relax, jump on that Netflix, okay? For all the gamers out there, there's plenty of time to do that, okay? But for us to, you know, right now we we're preaching a Mountain West champion uh, championship, right? And all I've been showing them is a picture of the trophy, right? And so that that only becomes as close as we get as seeing the picture of the trophy unless everyone handles their business and uh, it will allow us to hold the trophy physically here in December. So, yeah. Oh man. Well, we appreciate that. I mean, in our, in our business, we've seen, yeah, absolutely. That's true. It's getting in a routine. Uh, things have been different for us. We usually meet, you know, face to face with folks. And so doing zoom meetings and things like that have been different, but yeah, you're absolutely right. I think we all need to find a routine and just roll with it a little bit. Uh, cause yeah, we can't, we can't control when this thing goes away and, and some of the powers that be when they let us do what we want to do. So man, really appreciate your time. Uh, as always great to see you. Good luck. I hope I'm crossing my fingers, man, that, you know, you guys get the go ahead here soon and I already bought the season tickets. So, you know, I'll be there for sure. And then obviously <laughs> let me know if there's any way I can help with the team. Um, love to go up there and chat with those boys and, and, you know, help in any way I can. Absolutely, man. Ron, appreciate it. Tanner, man, it's nice to meet you. Yeah, you too, man. If you need anything for me, man, let me know. I'm yeah, here. Yeah, thanks.
Okay, yeah. thanks. Man. See you, man. Bye. Bye. Bye.